The president of the University of Pennsylvania, Liz McGill, has resigned, and we've just gotten word that the chair of the University of Pennsylvania's board of trustees, Scott Bach, has also resigned, effective immediately. The UPenn controversy began spiraling earlier this week after McGill's testimony before Congress about anti-Semitism on campus. Specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That was Tuesday, and this was the cleanup attempt by Liz McGill on Wednesday. In that moment, I was focused on our university's longstanding policies aligned with the U.S. Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. These policies need to be clarified and evaluated. That obviously was not enough, and of course she has now stepped down, so has the uh, chair of the Board of Trustees at the University of Pennsylvania, and we have uh, team coverage on all of this. CNN's Polo Sandoval, Matt Egan. Uh, Polo, let me start with you. Uh, what's the latest? What can you tell us? The developments have been swift moving here, Jim, with Liz McGill tonight announcing that she will be stepping down amid that growing chorus of calls for asking for her resignation in light of that testimony that she offered in Washington just this past Tuesday in a statement released by the university. Uh, we have learned that McGill uh, is expected to remain tenured uh, as faculty at Penn Carey Law and that she has also agreed to stay on at least until the interim um, president can be potentially be, a, be appointed. For some context here, McGill has been under growing scrutiny for her handling of anti-Semitism on campus, and that testimony that was offered on Tuesday was really uh, the last straw here, mainly referring to that, or at least her, her inability to just unequivocally say uh, that any mention of genocide uh, of Jewish people would be against the code of conduct at the university. Uh, we should also mention that, you know, we heard from other university officials tonight, including uh, one that we'll talk about here in a few moments, basically trying to paint a clearer picture of what he believed played out on Tuesday, saying that McGill was, quote, overprepared, that she was overlawyered, and essentially provided a legalistic answer to a moral question. So what you have now is uh, coming from the now former chair, of UPenn's Board of Trustees trying to explain what was an absolutely disastrous testimony that played out on Tuesday. Uh, and let me go to Matt Egan. Uh, Matt, I know you've been reporting on uh, the school being under tremendous pressure from donors. The donor community has been outraged over uh, these comments. Uh, take us uh, behind the scenes on that. Yeah, Jim, uh, remarkable developments this evening at one of the nation's most prestigious schools. I mean, first, the board chair, Scott Box, sent out a letter saying that the president, Liz McGill, is out. Then Scott Box sent out a statement saying he's out too. Now, make no mistake, both of these leaders were under pressure for months, as Polo just said. And again, it was over issues of anti-Semitism on campus, but Tuesday's hearing, which can only be described as disastrous, really was the final straw. I mean, that hearing lasted for hours, but it really just came down to just a precious few minutes where the leaders of Penn and Harvard and MIT, they, they struggled, right? I mean, they struggled to answer a question that many people would think would be easy to answer, right? Does calls for genocide of Jews, does that break the school's rules? And the leaders, including McGill, they, they, they fumbled that response, right? They did give kind of a legal answer and and that moment went viral on the internet it just exploded the backlash was so intense we heard from the wharton board of advisors which is basically a, a who's who of business leaders they called for an immediate leadership change at the school um more than 70 members of congress a bipartisan group calling for mcgill to resign it's, it's hard to get 70 members of congress to agree on much but they agreed on that you also had the former u.s ambassador john huntsman telling me that it wasn't even debatable whether or not McGill should leave. And, and you also had one mega donor uh, threatening to cancel a $100 million gift if a change wasn't wow. made. Now, 
Scott Bach was effusive in his praise of Liz McGill, calling her a very good person, uh, saying that she's not in the slightest bit anti-Semitic. I, I want to read you a, one line from uh, Bach's statement. Uh, he said, talking about the hearing, overprepared and overlawyered, given a hostile forum and high stakes, she provided a legalistic answer to a moral question, and that was wrong. It made for a dreadful 30-second soundbite in what was more than five hours of testimony. So, Jim, uh, there you have it. You have both Liz McGill and Scott Bach stepping down after that disastrous hearing on Tuesday. Yeah, just a devastating afternoon for the University of Pennsylvania. All right, uh, Polo Sandoval and Matt Egan, uh, thanks to both of you. I want to bring in Alex Proact. He's a professor uh, with the UPenn uh, School of Medicine. Uh, professor, uh, what's your response tonight? Well, uh, frankly, uh, I can't say I'm happy because it's hard to be happy about all the things that, that have been happening at the university, but I do believe that uh, Liz McGill could not have continued being the president given a number of, I would say, mistakes that she and people who, uh, I guess, maybe lawyered her up and prepared her made. I think she lost the trust of the community of faculty, donors, students. Of course, people have very complex opinions about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but this is about something completely different. And uh, I mean, the, the, the chair of the board, uh, Scott Bach, uh, tried to describe it as just a 30-second soundbite that did not go well for President McGill. Uh, but we talked to a Penn student in the last hour who has described a pretty hostile atmosphere on campus and that this has been building for some time. Uh, how would you describe things? Well, uh, I definitely think uh, that uh, the soundbite uh, during the hearings did not help, but um, uh, Ms. McGill could have helped herself by issuing a less lawyered up uh, apology or an explanation of what happened during that hearing. And unfortunately, that too was kind of canned. And uh, I don't think anybody who heard uh, that uh, post sort of post hoc uh, description felt that it was at all sincere. So I don't think it is fair to say it's just an unfortunate soundbite. We've all said things we did not mean, but given an opportunity to clarify the situation, she, she did not do that. And how do you think this news is going to be received by uh, students, by the faculty? What do you think? Well, um, I think people have uh, different opinions, and uh, maybe that's the important bit, is that uh, I understand uh, that um, you know, the lack of desire to unequivocally condemn calls for genocide is sort of coached within the framework of free speech. But unfortunately, and uh, many people have written and spoken about this, it's hard to cast university like UPenn as sort of uh, very much pro-free speech. Speech tends to be limited in many different respects. So I am actually a proponent of free speech. So I think people are probably going to have very different opinions depending on where they stand politically and how they feel about the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict, uh, et cetera. And that's a good thing. People should be having debates. They shouldn't cross over into violence. They shouldn't cross over into hate speech, et cetera. But uh, within the sort of norms of uh, human behavior. I think people should differ on their opinions and have conversations. And why do you think we saw the, the chair of the board, uh, Scott Bach, resign in addition to the, to the university's president? You know, I, I'm not really privy, of course, to any of these uh, discussions. Um, I suspect uh, that uh, maybe there is a realization that uh, they've waited a bit too long, that uh, maybe uh, uh, with the number of, again, unfortunate and, in my opinion, incorrect moves, uh, she could not have uh, really governed and sort of corrected the course. So uh, I don't know if uh, the idea to keep uh, Liz McGill uh, longer than she probably should have stayed came from Bach, and maybe that is why um, he decided to step down. But I, I would be just guessing. I don't know.